This is the Internet Report, where we uncover what's working and what's breaking on the Internet and why. Today, we're going to talk about just one outage. It happened a couple of days ago on May 3rd, and it involved Cloudflare. Now, most folks know of Cloudflare as a major CDN provider. They have a vast global network. They have a huge number of customers, um, but they also have other services. And the service that was impacted by this outage is a service called Magic Transit that was announced less than two years ago. So it's not, um, uh, you know, been in the market that long. Uh, so I think, I believe it was announced in August of 2019. And the way that the service works is that effectively Cloudflare is with their customer permission announcing the, uh, the customer's prefixes from their global network edge. And Cloudflare has a very large Anycast network. And for that reason, users would then get connected into Cloudflare's network very close to where they're located. And then the traffic would um, be routed across Cloudflare's network. They have other service options, um, including DDoS protection, firewall, load balancing, for example, that might otherwise be handled by a customer themselves. And then ultimately the traffic is encapsulated via, via GRE tunnel and sent to the customer. They also have other options in terms of direct um, connecting and peering. Um, but fundamentally, this is how the service works. Now, in terms of what happened, this was uh, something that was um, initially reported by them around 2312 UTC. So this was around 1112 UTC um, in the US on Pacific Coast would have been around 412 PM. Now, what they said about it was that they were investigating an issue of packet loss. Um, so we're going to look a little bit at how the issue manifested for some services that were using Magic Transit and for the users who were trying to connect to services who were, you know, again, using this particular service. So in looking at the um, kind of the nature of the outage itself, some outages can have, you, we see different levels of packet loss, for example. Um, and we saw that with this issue as well, although at its peak, it was fairly widespread and the packet loss was um, total across a large number of interfaces or infrastructure within Cloud, Cloudflare's network. So this is at um, 3.45 PM Pacific time. We see that there's a very large number of interfaces that are experiencing 100% packet loss within Cloudflare's network. That means that um, no traffic is uh, getting through. It's a you know, complete termination of traffic. Now, this 3.45 p.m. is about 30 minutes before there was any um, notice or acknowledgement of an issue. And the issue, as we can see here, was uh, pretty significant. I mean, there was a large number of interfaces, as we can see here, um, that were um, involved in the outage. And you can also see that it wasn't contained to a specific region. So we see um, infrastructure impacted in South Africa, Canada, India, we see uh, Europe, we see the US, um, different various cities. So this was a, a fairly um, a broad uh, impacting issue within their network that was impacting, again, these Magic Transit customers. And it, it didn't seem to have impacted their CDN service or any of the other services they offer. It was really just this particular service. Now, in terms of the length of time that this issue um, uh, kind of, you know, how long it occurred, um, we saw in, in one particular instance that over the course of about two hours, so starting around a little bit before, but around 3 p.m. Pacific time, we can see some levels of loss within their network. And then, you know, there's there's a little bit of um, a variation over that period, but it's still very, very high. And then we don't see the packet loss resolving until after 5 p.m. for this particular service. Whereas it, for other customers of theirs, um, we see something slightly different. So for example, 
um, this particular service was really only impacted during uh, kind of the, the height or the peak of the outage. Um, in this case, we can see 100% packet loss at um, you know, Cloudflare. Again, these are all different locations. We see Singapore here and um, we see Kuwait. So there's um, a pretty extreme uh, performance impact as, as we can see here, where just simply no traffic seems to be getting through to um, its ultimate destination. Now, in this particular case, the service um, that's using Cloudflare um, wasn't really impacted prior to this peak, and they weren't impacted too much afterwards. Now, that could just be because of um, where their users were coming from in this particular example or the service itself, but it may also have to do with uh, something that they did um, in terms of their peering and their announcement of their prefixes. So as we can see here, um, you know, this was taking place like right when the outage was at its peak around 3.45 PM Pacific time, we can see that they're peered with Cloudflare and Cloudflare is their service provider. And then if we move forward just about 30 minutes later, so this is really around the time that Cloudflare had issued a status update almost exactly around the same time, we can see that they are switching over to a different service provider. So if we just uh, look at this particular monitor, we can see that they are um, now announcing their prefixes through this other service provider that we see here. And the announcement or the path through Cloudflare is now inactive. Um, and we go through uh, into that next round, once that's propagated, we can see again, Cloudflare is no longer in the path and they're using a different service provider. So they, they effectively switched over to this alternate provider that they had um, in order to, we can assume, mitigate the impact of the outage on their service. Um, so that may be what contributed to them not being an impacted um, uh, for as long as some other services. Um, you know, so they, they really did take kind of active steps to uh, prevent this issue from impacting them. So that that is one of the benefits, you know, to having an understanding of how um, a particular, you know, your service provider, your trans trans transit provider, or other any other network that you rely on, is working for you. And if there is an issue, knowing that you can get ahead of the issue, ahead of the problem, and prevent um, users from getting impacted, or at least reduce the amount of time that um, issues or outages impact users. So. In this particular case, because um, you know they acted very quickly, this particular service wasn't as impacted as much as, say, um, you know maybe some of the others, uh, the other service that we looked at. So that's really important. Again, you know, um, providers, nobody's really um, immune to outages. It doesn't matter if you're a cloud provider, or a CDN provider, or any other service provider eventually something is going to crop up and it's not really a matter of trying to um, avoid providers that have outages. It's really about um, knowing that you um, can very quickly respond when issues take place. And part of that is, is having good visibility. And so if you, if you have that um, and you can get ahead of issues, even before a provider issues um, a statement acknowledging the issue, um, that can go a long way to reducing downtime and again, um, reducing the impact on your service. So this was an interesting um, incident that we saw, um, you know, and we're starting to see kind of more non-standard network services being offered from a variety of providers. So it's gonna be interesting to kind of see um, them over time and uh, what their overall um, availability and performance looks like. So that was the issue in a nutshell. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. And if you do, you can drop us an email at internetreport at thousandeyes.com with your name, t-shirt size, and address, and we will get that right over to you. So with that, we will see you next time.